All right, so I thought I'd make a video here on the cooling of the home ship. Um, somebody on Reddit was uh, curious to see how the cooling worked. Um, so I, I've gotten pretty good at cooling ships. It it took following a couple guides, which um, are readily available. Um, there are a bunch of you know quote unquote tricks to cooling. So let's uh, let's just go in and we'll we'll go through it in here. Um, so I have two. These are eight cylinder three by three modulars. Um, they require quite a bit of cooling, but as you can see, it's proportional to their size. So these are big engines, so they're going to require quite a bit of cooling. But as you can see, the footprint-wise, most of the cooling, or pretty much all the cooling, is in this is contained in this area. There's no tricks where I have cooling hidden under the deck or anything. All the cooling is in this area. So even though you know this is a considerable amount of cooling, it's very proportional to the size of the engine. So this ship can run at 21 knots, max speed, max throttle, for about 30 to 40 minutes before it starts to um, go over 100 degrees. Once it goes over 100 degrees, I have over temp protection, which reduces the throttle, and it reduces it down to 21 knots. So I can go 21 knots indefinitely with this cooling system. So for the rest of the time I'm running this engine, I can go at 21 knots and not overheat. I actually lose heat. So some of the tricks um, or methods to make cooling work. So as you can see, I'm using 5x5 liquid radiators. People say, oh, don't use liquid radiators. Use the electric radiators. Those are what you would see in a car. So I, you know, just for RP reasons, just for, um, you know, realism, I use liquid to liquid cooling because that's what a real ship would use. You know, you have an abundance of cold seawater. You might as well use that in a heat exchanger to cool hot um, engine coolant. So some things to do. I use small pumps. Um, there have been a bunch of guides that said you know the small pumps are actually producing greater efficiency than large pumps. They're also much more compact so I'll use that. So that's one of the tips I would use. Use small pumps. Um, another tip. You want to have an inlet pump. So as you can see this is coming from the outside of the ship right here. That's the, my coolant inlet from the seawater. That's my seawater side comes in, goes through the pump, and it goes into the um, the heat exchanger. It's coming out of the heat exchanger, and it's pumped again. So I have dual pumps. The reason you want to do this is you want stable flow. So for example, um, I think this is somewhere like you know 60 or 70 liters in, 60 or 70 liters out. You want to keep see it staying 60 60 70 70 whatever it is you don't want it to be flickering around if it's flickering around you have an oscillation you're not going to get good cooling so one of the ways to prevent that is you want to pump in you want to pump out also if you notice I'm running up my outflow of my seawater up high the reason you want to do this as you can see the black line is my water line you want to try to pump your outflow above the water line and the reason for this is pretty simple. When you're pumping water out, you're fighting against the water pressure. And so that can give you a slower um, liter per second on the pumps. It can also give you oscillation of the pumps. So you want to make sure your water outflow is above the water line. That gives you um, zero resistance of the water pumping out. You know, it takes a little bit of energy to pump up this high, but it's nothing compared to pumping against the water pressure. So again, you want to make sure you have a pump coming in, you want to go through, you want to pump out, and you want to go outside of the water, above the water line. Alright, so as you can see, I have dual stacks here. So there's two, four, six, and eight. So that number should ring a bell. I have eight cylinders, I have eight coolant manifolds. So I tend to do one coolant manifold per cylinder. That tends to be a pretty good thing. Now I have additional cooling in here because I'm running the ship at a higher speed than the real version. I also have some electric radiators hidden in here. So let's count those up. One, two, uh, three, four. So I have four electric radiators in here. This is giving me about maybe 15 extra minutes of max speed runtime. Um, you know, and it's giving me a couple extra knots when I end up doing my overheat protection. So this is pretty simple. They're electric radiators. Again, they have a pump on the inside and the outside. All right. So last thing we'll check inside is let's check my overheat protection system. So pretty simply, um, one of the ways you can prevent overheat and make your ship run, you know, um, 
pretty realistically and pretty well is you have overheat protection system. So pretty simply here, um, I'm coming from the, uh, all this is doing here is this is telling me, where am I at here? See where this flows to. Okay, so you see this is coming to right, um, right here off composite three. So this is the engine. Composite three is your temperature. So this is reading the temperature. So pretty simple overheat protection system. If my temperature is greater than 100 degrees and the um, up-down counter is reading greater than 7.8 RPS, it's going to it's going to reduce my throttle automatically. So what this does is as soon as the temperature goes above 100 degrees, it automatically will pull my throttle back to 7.8 RPS. All right, the setting of 7.8. Now, my engine actually never gets up to 7.8 RPS. This just is the numbers I use to put through the PID, which will reduce it to the appropriate, um, the appropriate thrust setting. So for this particular ship, at a setting of 7.8, it actually loses temperature. So, like I was saying, I can go at 21 knots for about 30 to 40 minutes, and then I can go 20 knots indefinitely, essentially forever, um, because at 20 knots, I will actually lose heat with this cooling system. All right, so that's the overheat protection system. So let's spawn it in, and let's look at a couple other things really quick. All right, so let me. So as you can see, we have bubbles. So the system is on just because I have infinite electricity on, and I have it set to run constantly, which that will change in the future. I'll have it set for when it goes over temperature. All right, so let's look at a couple things here. So if we look at the liquid-liquid heat exchanger, you'll see. Notice the top numbers. That's 74 liters in, about 74 liters out. Notice the numbers are not oscillating. If you look at the bottom numbers, you saw. You saw how they were kind of jittering around and now they're stable. That's what you want. You want stable flow. As you notice, the numbers are barely moving. If your numbers, your flow rates are moving around rapidly, you do not have good flow rate. You might have to add pumps. Um, you know, so that's that's something you want to look at. So as you can see, my pump in's coming in at 74 liters, my pump out's coming around 73 liters. Part of that is pro the reason why this number is smaller is probably because I'm having to pump up a higher distance. If I put another pump there, I'd probably get even better flow, but I don't really need it. If we look at the radiator behind, um, the flow rates are a little bit lower on that, and I'm assuming that's because this is further away from the engine. So one way we could solve this, which, again, I don't need to. My system works fine, is we could use manifold pieces to push these coolant, um, these coolant heads for closer to the wall so that the pipes aren't as long. So as the pipes get longer, you need more pumps. So as you can see, this is running at 55.6 in, 55.6 out, 60.4 in, 60.4 out. As you can see, the numbers are not jumping around. If I had this outflow here going out of the ship here and fighting the water pressure, these numbers would probably be jumping around and you would not be getting efficient cooling. All right, so that's that's the main thing you want to do is you want to make sure these numbers are stable. If these numbers are stable, you're going to get good cooling. If these numbers are not stable, you're going to get pretty poor cooling. Like I said before, I also recommend use um, one one cooling loop per cylinder. So as you can see, I have a uh, coolant manifold. That's one for one of these. Do not stack these in series. What I mean by that is don't have, say, say you have one cooling manifold for the entire engine and it came out, went through this one, then it went through this one, then it went through that one, then it went through that one. You're going to get less cooling here. You want dedicated loops. So this comes out, it goes into the heat exchanger, goes back around to the engine. This goes in from the ocean, comes out, goes back out the ocean. All right, so this, this system allows this ship to run at 20 knots, indefinitely, forever. Um, the real ship will run at 18.5 knots, so this ship is faster than its real life counterpart, and it will run cool forever. And you know, this this looks like a lot of cooling, but as you can see, footprint wise and the size of the ship, this is not taking up 20% of my ship to cool. This is taking up barely any space to cool my ship. So 
Um, I just thought it'd be easier to make a video so you can kind of see this. Um, if I can find the link, um, I'll include this as well on the Reddit reply um, to the guide that I've used. And I, I, you know, had a couple ideas for that person. They put in their guide, um, like putting above waterline. Um, the the last ditch effort. Um, I'll say really quick. Let me see if I can find it. Um, it's um, it's an old ship, so. Here it is. All right, so this ship is an old ship. I haven't played with this one in a while. Um, so the last ditch effort you can do is you can do raw water cooling. If you're really having issues, um, you can have, do raw water cooling. You know, things like outboard motors use raw water cooling all the time. Um, so it's very simple. As you can see, we have inflow outflows. Um, the pump goes in. It goes through a coolant manifold, it comes out, and it goes back into the ocean. Now, this is going to give you scaling. Now, I don't even know if the game has scaling enabled in it. Um, but if it does, you know, a lot of people, you know, you might, you know, they generally don't leave their ship out in the world. They generally will put the ship back into the workbench when they're done. Well, the scaling is going to reset. So, if you don't think you're going to be using this engine for a long time, um, you don't have to worry about scaling, you know, just use raw water cooling, you know, that ship there, my intent, my, the ship we showed before, my intention is to keep that in the world permanently. So, you know, I don't want any engine scaling, plus I want it to be realistic. So if you need to use raw water cooling, as you can see, that's just raw water cools. It takes from the ocean and puts it back in. So this uh, this one you'll show see it it shows zero flow rates just because on this ship I have to actually start it to get the cooling to go but again you'd want to look for the same thing you want to make sure that the uh, that the flow rates are consistent and not uh, flickering around um, hopefully that answers some people's questions and helps people with some cooling thanks for watching